Assalamualaikum everyone. Welcome to uh, week 11 of your BBA course, Creativity and Innovation. Uh, for this week, uh, talking to you about or with reference to a handout, which I had shared last week. Uh, the topic was comparative advantage with reference to innovation. Let me show you the uh, topic first from the course outline. So if you look at your course outline for week 10 and uh, going into week 12, 11, I will also explain this. The topic we are focusing on is innovation and comparative advantage. So during week 10, I shared this handout with you through the Google Classroom, asking you to read or review it, especially pay attention to the questions at the end. There are about four questions. And uh, then connect uh, your understanding of this handout based on your reading with what I am going to be talking about when I'm reviewing this handout during uh, week 11, which is this uh, video lecture or talk. Uh, by the end of this uh, handout presentation, I will then have a brief review of the week 11 handout innovation as a business process, whereby I will be uh, discussing the case of T20 cricket uh, in Pakistan as well as around the world. And uh, you will be required to uh, read this handout during week 11 and for week 12, which is next week. Again, I will be reviewing this handout uh, as well. So coming back to the discussion point for today, Uh, as you can see, this is uh, week 10's topic being covered through week 11's uh, video lecture or talk. It is titled Achieving Comparative Advantage, the Case of Innovation at Anglo Foods Limited, Pakistan. Uh, it has been uh, derived um, from three major sources. One is your course book by Joe Ted and John Bassent. Uh, I have done some work on this handout myself as well to make some amendments and additions. And then it takes help from the Anglo Foods uh, website or some of the information available through their online platform. Uh, before I begin a discussion on this handout, let me quickly show you two of the uh, relevant websites that I'll be referring to while I'm talking to you about Anglo Foods. One is the website of uh, Anglo Foods itself. As you can see here, uh, is, this, is, uh, this company is now called Friesland Campina Anglo Foods, Anglo Pakistan Limited. Uh, I will explain why this change in name and what has happened uh, because the handout that you uh, were required to read and the handout that I shared with you, uh, at the time of writing or preparing that handout, uh, it, the company was not uh, taken over by Friesland Campina as a subsidiary. Uh, but there have been some changes since then. Hence, you see some uh, different uh, pieces of information here as well. So I'll be looking at some aspects of their a website and uh, this is the second website of Anglo Pakistan. Anglo Pakistan is the uh, company which owns or which had a major, major share in Anglo Foods. So uh, I will be connecting some of my case or handout discussion with Anglo Pakistan and also with Anglo Foods. Okay, so let's now begin our discussion with regards to this handout. Uh, the basic idea is that the handout is trying to tell the reader 
the uh, importance of innovation uh, when it comes to any organization or company achieving competitive advantage. What is the role of innovation? How it enables any company, any organization to achieve competitive advantage? This is the focus of this handout. Now, it starts with some generic discussion about what is competitive advantage. So I have highlighted some relevant sections here. For, its, for instance, it says that what successful organizations have in common is that they derive their success in large measure from innovation and acquiring and sustaining a competitive advantage, something I mentioned uh, just a while. Uh, what is competitive advantage? The writer goes on to try and tell us what it means. So for example, a competitive advantage refers to that characteristic of a business that allows it to outperform it com its competitors. Uh, competitive advantage can be defined or described in a number of ways. For instance, the ability of or the capability of a company or organization to be consistently better at doing something compared to its competitors. Now, please remember that when I say this, I'm using the word consistently. By consistently, I mean that competitive advantage is something that a company is able to be better at or uh, a company is able to perform better at uh, continuously. Uh, it's not like a one time hit or, you know, uh, achieving something or doing something better only once. You have to sustain it. You have to continue to be better and you have to be better at that particular aspect of your business compared to the competitors uh, in uh, continuously to be able to then achieve a competitive advantage. Now, uh, keeping this particular aspect in mind, uh, the write-up goes on to tell us that whilst competitor, competitive advantage can come from uh, the size of a company just because it is very big or has uh, a lot of assets or uh, it has uh, access to a lot of resources or it has big operations or big uh, scope of uh, its uh, business. Yeah. It can also come from possession of assets. But more importantly, uh, the right write-up tells us this that this pattern of competitive advantage is increasingly coming in favor of those organizations which can mobilize knowledge and technological skills and experience to create novelty in their offerings. By offerings, we mean products and services and the way in which they create and deliver those offerings. So what this point means is that Increasingly, the trend in terms of companies or organizations uh, acquiring or achieving competitive advantage is shifting towards their ability to mobilize their knowledge or experience or expertise and their skills in such a way that they can um, offer novelty or uniqueness in their products and services. And also the processes through which they provide these products and services to their customers. Now, I'm using two words here, product and process. So if you recall, uh, when we started this semester, two very important points with regards to innovation that I talked about were product innovation and process innovation. So this connects with the uh, concept of product and process innovation. So again, the write-up is trying to suggest that increasingly companies that are uh, better or stronger at continuous product innovation and or continuous process innovation, they are the ones who truly achieve competitive advantage. And this is something which we are going to talk about later on when it comes to details about Engro. Moving further, uh, the handout tells us that in the case of more mature and established products, now please remember what this means by mature and established products. Mature and established product means that those products which have a consistent demand uh, uh, and they are not seeing uh, an increased trend towards sales and market growth. For example, uh, most of the food products, and the reason I'm talking about food 
is because our case or write up is about angro foods now if you look at the food category the food business across the world including pakistan is a relatively mature and established market what it means is that it's a really relatively stable market for example one category of food which is dairy products uh, the market for dairy products is you know mature in the sense that it is consistent the demand is not going to have any major shifts even in the future people will continue to consume milk and yogurt and related dairy products uh, regardless of the source regardless of where they get it from some of us will buy milk as available from the shops some of us will buy the processed milk either way the pro the market will remain mature there will not be very much any ups and downs or increasing or decreasing trends in the market so that's the point being made here that in the case of mature and established products competitive sales growth comes not simply from being able to offer low prices but also from a variety of non price factors such as design customization and quality now what this means is that markets which are relatively mature or stable where there is not a lot of fluctuation in the market that demand for the products is consistent just like the example of the dairy products that i explained or for example you look at the market for bread uh, uh, or the market for um, bakery products or the regular breads we buy from the shops uh, the naan the naan buys or etc or the tandoors as we say this is a very stable market you know you will you will always have a demand for uh, roti or bread across pakistan uh, so that's why i'm giving you this example of food as being one of those industries in which market is stable or mature so the point here is that when it comes to such mature markets where demand is not fluctuating where people have a consistent need for the products the write up is saying that in order to be competitive or to gain competitive advantage uh, companies or organizations cannot simply do it by decreasing their prices or offering the lowest price rather they also have to emphasize or focus on non price factors to achieve competitive advantage and some of these non price factors for competitive advantage are design customization quality and again keep this point in mind because when it comes to engro we will be focusing on this dimension of design customization and quality as the bedrock or the foundation of their competitive advantage engro is not a company which is positioning itself or focusing on a low price uh, dimension to achieve success in the market they are more focused on quality design and customization moving further the right of tries to tell us that increasingly products are facing the crisis of shortening life cycles you see this point of short, shortening product life cycles what it means is that uh this is especially true for technology products that you will find one product being replaced by another product or better product very fast and this is so much true for so many industries uh maybe it's not that true for uh, the food industry because again the reason is it's a mature or stable market but even then within the food sector because of competitive pressures uh companies while the product while the demand for dairy products might remain mature or stable uh, uh what we have to understand is that uh, people have options or choices when it comes to buying food products so because of these choices just because your product is selling today it's not necessary that it will be successful or sellable tomorrow also so a product can you know fall flat or go down in terms of its sales due to competitive pressures very quickly that's why it's saying that even in some stable markets also the products do not necessarily have a long life cycle they can have very short life cycles so in this environment of competition and pressure for achieving competitive advantage the write up tells us that being able to replace products frequently with better versions is going to be increasingly important the more flexible a company is 
how quickly it is able to replace an existing product with a new one or an improved one using the product innovation aspects is going to be a key source of its competitive advantage. In other words, in the initial part of this write-up, the, the authors or the write-up is focusing on product innovation. And later on, it moves towards explaining process innovation. Moving further, the write-up tells us the concept of competing in time to achieve competitive advantage. What it means is competing in time reflects a growing pressure on firms, not just to introduce new products, but to do faster than competitors. Being the first mover, being able to launch your product uh, before anyone else, being agile, being fast, being able to design and, uh, you know, finalize the product and go into mass scale production quicker than your competitor so that you can enter the market with this new product or improved product quickly is a very important source of competitive advantage as well. At the same time, new product development is an important capability because the environment is constantly changing. So this pressure of, or this ability to innovate in terms of the product, it is not just important in terms of, you know, beating your competitors by coming into the market first, but also it is important as a competitive advantage because market conditions do not remain the same. Things in an industry can change very fast all of a sudden. And this may result in, you know, the company being tested on its ability to quickly react and incorporate changes into its product in in accordance with those new realities or changing environment or changes in the environment or industry or market, this is going to be a very important aspect of competitive advantage as well. So, for example, the write-up tells that in some cases, sometimes a legislation, some kind of law, some kind of uh, decision by the government uh, of a country where the company is operating, sometimes such legislation creates problems or creates opportunities for firms. And then in, 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 in response to those legal requirements of government decisions, they have to quickly uh, respond and incorporate uh, relevant product changes. And I'm going to talk about this a little later when I'm looking at the example of Android. Similarly, <clears throat> Sometimes competitors' actions are such that they put a lot of pressure on a company to respond in terms of product changes. So these are the, some of the environmental aspects or industry factors which can put pressure on a company to respond and make quick innovations to the product or quick or fast changes or improvements to the product or launch new products in response to these changing market conditions. Moving further, the write-up gradually shifts from focus on product innovation to process innovations as a source of competitive advantage. So, for example, here it says uh, on page uh, two of this handout, whilst new products are often seen as the cutting edge of innovation, it's process innovations which can play just as uh, important a strategic role. So, for example, being able to make something no one else can or to do so in ways which are better than anyone else is a powerful source of comparative advantage or advantage. Uh, in this regard, the example of Japanese dominance uh, in terms of the car industry is given. Brands like Toyota, Honda, and Nissan, uh, they established a very strong foothold in the car or automobile industry precisely because of the Japanese ability to uh, uh, achieve process innovations, their ability to produce cars using some uh, such performance advantages, which enable them to uh, have quality products, but at better prices as well. And that is why they were able to penetrate big markets like the US market using their process innovation capability as a competitive advantage, the way they were manufacturing cars, the automation, the level of use of technology, uh, and uh, the process, the whole process of, you know, manufacturing cars was the key advantage of the Japanese companies for many, many years. Similarly, examples of Citibank, Benetton, Zara, and Southwest Airlines, you can read upon these uh, uh, through the internet 
what Citibank did in terms of you know process innovation, Benetton, um, Zara, and Southwest Airlines. These are all examples of firms or companies which have kept, uh, which have you know um, acquired competitive advantage by uh, way of their focus on process innovations. Moving further. The write-up goes on to tell us, importantly, we need to remember that the advantage which flow, advantages which flow from these innovative steps gradually get competed away as others imitate. Now, please remember that just because you are, as a firm, you are better at product innovation or process innovation, it does not mean that uh, your idea or your product or your process will not be imitated or copied. Because the moment it is copied, the moment your competitor is able to produce a similar product or is able to use the product using a similar process that you are doing, your competitive advantage, your uniqueness uh, is lost. So what this means is that companies have to consistently, constantly continue to innovate in terms of product or process. They cannot afford to stop any at any time. The reason is that the competitor might catch up or com uh, competitor might be able to imitate or competitor even might be able to uh, find out a better way of doing things. Uh, so there's no room for relaxation or thinking that uh, you can afford to uh, uh, remain uh, un uncertain or remain oblivious to <clears throat> what the market is doing or what the competitor is doing. Starting from the last paragraph of page two of this handout, uh, it focus, starts to focus on annual foods. Now, please remember that at the time this handout was developed, uh, the company's uh, original um, headquarters or main uh, location was Sahiwal, Pakistan. This connects with um, uh, the uh, dairy industry and uh, the raw material, the raw milk especially, which is available in uh, central Punjab and Saiwal was one of the major cities in this regard. However, ever since the company's acquisition by uh, uh, the Dutch company, as I mentioned when I was showing this uh, this website, Friesland Campina, when, uh, when they uh, took over the company, this happened probably, if I'm not wrong, uh, in fact, I'll quickly give you a quick handout of this uh, company. So it says that the company was acquired by Friesland Campina in uh, 2016. But however, what, what I would must share here is that uh, the uh, this, this acquisition was not uh, immediately reported. It took a while before uh, all the legal requirements were fulfilled. So uh, as of 2020, this uh, company is now called uh, Friesland Campina Agro. Uh, so coming back to this, because of this acquisition by the Dutch company, the headquarters now has shifted to uh, Karachi uh, instead of Sahiwal. And that's why in the handout, I've highlighted this point in red color to suggest that this is something which has changed uh, and the headquarters has shifted. Similarly, the company is no longer the, the, the subsidiary of Angro Corporation. Rather, it has a mixed ownership in terms of the Dutch company and Angro both having shares in this uh, company. However, uh, the Dutch company, Friesland Campina, has a bigger share. So again, this uh, subsidiary is no longer Angro Corporation. It's a combination of Angro as well as Friesland Campina, both of these uh, have a stake or uh, shares in agro foods. Now, in the handout, there are two categories of uh, agro foods products which are presented. One is the food and beverages, uh, whereby the title of this category is Olpers, and here you have a list or number of different products under the Olpers brand connected with their. Uh, milk or dairy product category. Uh, and in the handout, the second major category is the Omor category in, in the frozen desserts component, which are all the different kinds of ice creams. 
However, the reason I've highlighted frozen desserts and food and beverages with in red font, red color, is because ever since the take over of uh, Anglo Foods by Royal Friesland Campina, the categorization has changed. As you can see here, Olpers, Omor, but they are also showing a third category, which is Taran. So, in the case of handout, we had two categories: Olpers and uh, Omor. But now, with an update, because of the acquisition of Friesland Campina and some changes taking place at Anglo Foods, they have the third category, Tarang as well. <clears throat> now, if I look, take you to Olpers, here you have uh, different products as shown on their website. So they have full, full cream milk, low fat milk, full cream milk powder, and dairy cream. These are some of the subcategories. If I take you to uh, the Omor frozen desserts category, again, you will find three subcategories, cups and sticks, cones, and family packs. And if I take you to the third category, which is not mentioned in the handout, uh, because at the time of the handout, this category did not exist. This is Tarang, which is their last category. Uh, and within that, they have three different products uh, which are in this domain. Uh, one thing you will notice is that Anglo places a lot of emphasis on their packaging and design. And remember, I mentioned the word design uh, a while ago at the start of the handout. So I will explain or uh, provide some further details uh, a little later. So. Having a look at these products and their visual appearance and focus on design and packaging, uh, this has to be kept in mind because this will be one of the points to remember when you are attempting to answer those questions at the end of the handout. Some of the major competitors of Anglo Foods in Pakistan are Nestle Pakistan, Fauji Foods, formerly Noor Foods, Shakar Ganj, Halib, and some of the other players. And these are some examples, some of the uh, companies which are uh, competing with Anglo Foods uh, in terms of its products. Now, coming towards the last part of this handout, this was a self-learning activity assigned to you last week. Now, using the discussion that uh, I am having with you right now, you will attempt to answer these questions which are provided here. Now, for example, the first question in this handout is how does the company use its corporate knowledge, skills, and experience for achieving competitive advantage in the food category? Uh, remember, I mentioned the concept of knowledge, experience, and skills at the start of this handout. How does the company do that? Now, part of this answer comes from the paragraph above this question. The use of knowledge, skills, and experience in creating and delivering products. 87% of Anglo Foods is owned by Anglo Corporation. Again, this ownership has not changed. As I mentioned, Anglo Foods is not the major uh, shareholder. It is a shareholder, but the dominant portion is now taken up by the Dutch company, Friesland Campina. However, uh, because for many years the company Anglo Foods was uh, a subsidiary of Engro Food or uh, Engro Corporation. Engro Corporation is a big organization. It has different uh, subsidiaries or subcategories or businesses. It is the owner of Engro Fertilizers. It, of course, is the owner or was the major shareholder for Engro Foods. It is also a major owner of Engro PowerGen, which is a power generation company. It is also into the petrochemicals business. It is also into the trading and processing business. And it is also into the business of chemical storage and handling through their Angro Go Pack. To illustrate this point, let me take you to the Angro Corporation website. So, for example, if you go to their website and you check this uh, uh, link, our verticals, you find that they are into the energy and related infrastructure business to Angro Energy and Angro Energy LNG terminal, different. You can click on these to find out what kind of business this is. They're in the food and agriculture business. Here you have our case company, Friesland Campina Angro, uh, 
the case that we are focusing on but then you see agro fertilizers and agro exempt also they are into the petrochemical business through polymer and chemicals and opac and now since the last couple of years they've also moved into the telecom sector through agro digital and agro fresh now what i'm trying to here suggest is if you look keep these points in mind and now if you come back to this question what it means is that they have the company agro food is bringing in a lot of knowledge experience and skills from other businesses uh, into their food business for example their fertilizer business how do you manufacture a fertilizer what kind of technical know how skill or knowledge you need to manufacture a fertilizer what kind of chemicals are used agro um, has transferred this knowledge to agro foods also so in terms of you know producing processed milk or frozen desserts or ice creams agro is using its knowledge of the fertilizer business as well similarly in the energy sector they are using their knowledge of uh, energy consumption energy production to be able to produce their food products uh, at, at relatively lower costs or through cost efficiencies associated with energy similarly uh, if you look at their chemical storage and handling business agro gopack which uh, is also visible on their website how do you store different chemicals how do you store food products milk is a very important raw material when it arrives from these dairy farms how do you use different kinds of equipments to store uh, milk which is a perishable product which has a very which does not have a very long shelf life so how do you store that they're using their knowledge of agro wopac chemical storage and handling to uh, uh, you know capitalize uh, in terms of their food business also and how they produce and store processed food and dairy products and desserts ice creams taran etc so these are some of the important points for you to remember when you look at this question the first question similarly the second question i'm going to give you some hints again just like the previous one what design customization and quality elements are used by agro foods for product innovation now a, a somewhat somewhat of a hint is dropped here uh, the focus on design customization and quality for product innovation as evident from a wide range of food products highlighted above now what it means is that uh, agro foods has developed this very strong capability on packaging and designing the product inside the packaging the main the primary product remains the same i mean if you look at their uh, for example all purpose category let me take you there now if you look at this uh the uh, the essential product is the same but they are using very strong elements of packaging strong emphasis on quality packaging design appearance uh different shapes of the packaging different formats uh to increase product shelf life but also to increase its visual appeal so this is an important aspect to remember when you are trying to answer or attempting to give an answer to this question that what are the design customization and quality elements that they are using to uh, innovate so what what they do is their milk product as a primary product remains the same they make these adjustments to the packaging taran is just one example of you know a product which was a originally a by product from their milk processing it was a product which was of no use frankly speaking when processing the milk for all purpose so instead of wasting uh, uh, that product or throwing it away they they came up with a very good idea of you know even converting that into a sellable product uh, that, that is why it is called a tea whitener it is not called milk product because of the very fact that it is not milk it is a by product resulting from the production of their main dairy products for all purpose so they have converted that into taran brand <clears throat> for question 3 which asks has agro foods replaced its old products with new ones or launched new products altogether how partial hint is dropped here the ability to replace products frequently with better versions the ability to compete in time and the ability to change products with changing times now if you look at again the example 
what Olpers has achieved is that they can make these design changes to the uh, Olpers or their desserts, ice creams very quickly. Uh, this is one of their very important skills. They can launch new ice creams very fast. It's just a matter of, you know, uh, a very short span of time. They can come up with new flavors. They can add some certain flavors to their existing products. And for example, if I take you to their cones category to illustrate what I'm trying to suggest, they have the vanilla and strawberry flavor, pistachio and chocolate, and so on and so forth. So they come up with these new flavors all the time, and it's very fast. And this is one of their very important sources of competitive advantage to be able to achieve these uh, product changes uh, through very efficient process changes in terms of how they manufacture desserts. So this aspect has to be understood in order to answer this third question. And finally, the last question is, can agro food products and processes be easily imitated by competitors? Why or why not? Well, this point is debatable. It depends what kind of stance a student wants to take. A partial hint to this question is dropped here, whereby being able to make something no one else can or to do so in ways which are better than anyone else is a powerful source of advantage. Now, if you look at the uh, question, whether imitate uh, competitors can imitate Engro, we have to go back to this huge advantage that is brought by their diverse portfolio of businesses as shown here. Plus also the fact that Friesland Campina is now uh, the major shareholder. This is a Dutch food company. They bring in a lot of uh, uh, cost efficiency knowledge, design knowledge, their knowledge of the European market, their knowledge of the their, their multinational operations. So they, they also bring in a lot of technical knowledge and expertise and skills, uh, which means that uh, for this question, even though we cannot categorically say whether competitors will be able to uh, match them easily or not, but the signs are that the company using its Engro corporation background and now Friesland Campina's expertise, knowledge, and skill of the food sector, it is trying to stay ahead of its competitors and it is trying to sustain or maintain its competitive advantage. Um, so these are some of the important points that I wanted to make. With this, I come to the end of my presentation. Uh, I will be in touch with you uh, with regards to the next topic. Uh, um, before I close my session, the final point I want to make is that to me, I will be discussing this handout with you, innovation as a business process, uh, where I'll be discussing the case of T20 cricket as an innovation in cricket. So I will be sharing this uh, handout with you through the Google Classroom also, and then cover it uh, in detail uh, during uh, week 12. Uh, uh, if you look at this handout, just one final point, that at the end, there are five questions which are given. So these um, will be covered during week 12. Uh, I thank you for your time. Um, thank you very much uh, and for the best Allah office.